हरि ओम डियर गर्ल्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वॉट आर दि ई ट्रिपल ई रेकमेंडेड प्राक्टिस फॉर साफ्टवेर डिजाइन डिस्क्रिप्शन वी आर करंटली डिस्कसिंग मॉड्यूल थ्री आई सॉल ऑफ यू नो इन मॉड्यूल थ्री वी डिस्कस साफ्टवेर डिजाइन ऑल दीज टॉपिक्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर द डेफिनेशन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ साफ्टवेयर डिजाइन एंड वॉट इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड importance of design phase we have also seen what is the importance of modularity why we do the modularity how modularity can be uh, considered in a software design and the different strategies used for the design then we have also discussed what is function oriented design today in this video we are going to talk about the i triple e recommended practice for software design description so let me go to the so this is the i triple e recommended practice for software design description as mentioned by rakesh agarwal sorry as mentioned by kk agarwal's software engineering third edition textbook now this i triple e recommended practice why we are discussing the i triple e recommended practice for software design description is that we have seen different software designs different levels all those things we discussed right the design notations used in function oriented design etc now the important factor here is the software design document sdd software design document is the one which is the output of the design phase software design document is the output of the design phase if so how what is the recommended content of the software design document is to be observed that is why we are discussing this particular topic so the topic deals with what is the scope of this description the, or uh, let me put it this way what is the scope of this i triple e recommended practice what are the references what are the different definitions used here what is the purpose of the software design document what are the design description information content what is the design description organization as mentioned by this ieee standard now if you take the scope of this particular standard a software design document is a representation of a software system that is used as a medium for communicating software design information മീഡിയം for communicating software design information so this can be used by two different people the customer as well as the developer now the references for this particular standard these are the different references available we have the actually this particular ieee standard is 1016 released in 1998 and this particular standard refers some of the recommended practices available in IEEE standard 830 and IEEE standard 610.12 this is released in 1990 for software engineering terminologies and this is released in 1998 that specifies the requirement specifications so these are the two references used for the developing this particular standard now these are some of the definitions used in this particular 
standard IEEE standard one is called as design entity design view entity attributes software design description and software design description is also called a software design document the design entity is nothing but an element or it can be a component it can also be called as a component of a design which is structurally and functionally distinct from other elements and that is separately named and referenced this is what you call as a design entity so if an element of a design can be specified functionally as well as structurally as a separate element then I can call it as design entity I repeat if a component of your design can be specified separately and that can give a structural and functional distinction from other elements then you can call it as a design entity say for example if you are going to take a login component a login component gives a specification and it can be separately named also as an element in your document then you call it as design entity another one is design view design view is nothing but a subset of design entity attribute information that is specially sorry that is specifically suited to the needs of a software project activity so for the design entity if you have a subset and if the subset of uh, design entity attribute information suits to the needs of a software project then you call it as a design view another one is entity attributes a named property or characteristics of the design entity so if i have a login component as a design entity then the subset of login component can be called as the design view say for example the user interface can be called as a design view or the database that you are going to use for the login component can also be called as the design view how the database and the login interface is connected that can also be called as a design view and if for the login component if you have some specific attributes to be specified that can be called as entity attributes then you have software design description this is a representation of the system created to facilitate analysis planning implementation and decision making So that is software design description a representation of a software system created and this design description when you are going to create we create it only for analyzing the system or you want to plan this software system or you want to implement something in the software system you want to implement the requirement analysis that you have done or you want to implement the requirements specified by the customer then you will be using the design description and not only that we mainly use it for making decision whether this design can be uh, put in or it can be implemented in plan sorry in um, it can be implemented as a, a what do you call it as as uh, specification a or specification b so what are the things that you need to implement a particular design so those kind of things called as decision making can be done using the software design description and so the scope of the IEEE standard we have seen that gives you a representation of a software system and it acts as a medium for communication between the developer and the customer and not only that between the developer and the coding people also you can use it and these are the references for this particular standard also we have seen then we have seen different definitions used here one is called as design entity a cut particular component which can be separately specified and this component is structurally and functionally it is independent 
then you have the design view design view is nothing but a subset of design entity attribute information that is specifically suited to the needs of a software project activity and another one is entity attributes entity attribute is whatever design entity you are going to specify and for that entity if you have properties and characteristics that can also be specified and this one generally provides a statement of fact about the entity then you have the design description this is simply a representation of a software system created which will be facilitating the analysis planning implementation and decision making then the next one is called as purpose of an sdd purpose of your software design description so what is the purpose of software design description now the sdd will generally shows how the software system will be structured to satisfy the requirements identified in the srs and it is basically the translation of requirements into a description of the software structure software components interfaces and the database design data necessary for the implementation phase etc therefore your software de de design description becomes the blueprint for the implementation activity so whatever you have specified in the software requirement specification this is again uh, i i think uh, you girls remember srs is the output of your requirement analysis phase and this output specifies all the requirements specified by the customer and all these requirements will be now transformed into a design in this sdd and this sdd will basically specify the software structure archit or you call it as architecture then software components and what are the different user interfaces you are going to use when i say interfaces it not only interfaces any other application programming interfaces you are going to use that also be included here and any data necessary for the implementation phase etc therefore your software design description generally becomes the blueprint you, it gives you a complete plan of how the implementation activity is to be carried out then you have the design description information content so when you have this design description information content you will have all these things inside the design description information content it is nothing but the introduction the design entities and design entity attributes apart from that the attributes and the associated information items are defined in the following subsections also identification type purpose function subordinates dependencies interfaces resources processing and data then you have the design description organization so any design description your sdd must follow this particular format so in any sdd you must have the introduction the purpose scope definitions and acronyms then the second part will be references and the third one will be the decomposition description like what are the different modules available and what is, oh, the module name and its description should be given then at the same time the process decomposition can also be given the data decomposition can also be specified so in chapter 1 you will have the introduction and in chapter 2 you will have the references chapter 3 so chapter 3 deals with decomposition components and chapter 4 will specify the dependency descriptions how one module is dependent on another module how one process depends on another process and how data depends on another data those dependencies can be specified then you will have all the interface descriptions 
all the module interfaces and the process interfaces must be specified then you must have the detailed design so these are generally the six chapters you will have in the software design description introduction references the decomposition of description when i say description the entire software system description then the dependencies between the decomposed modules and processes and the interfaces between the modules and the process and you will have all the detailed design description will also be specified here so this is what you call as ieee standard for ieee standard for software design description now when you take this ieee standard the recommended organization any recommended organization of the software development sorry software design description into separate design views to facilitate information access and assimilation is given in this particular table why repeat a recommended organization of std into separate design view to facilitate information access and assimilation is given in this particular table so for the decomposition description what is the scope partitioning the system into design entities and the entity attribute will be identification type purpose function subordinates and example is given here a hierarchical decomposition diagram or any natural language can also be used and in the way, same way for dependency description the description of relationship among the entities must be specified and their identification type purpose dependencies and what are the resources used can be specified here then this can be represented as a structure chart a data flow diagram or transaction diagram then you have the interface description you can have list of all the everything a designer developer tester needs to know to use the design entities that make up the system and specify the identification function interfaces etc and you can use parameter tables or interface files for representing the interface description then you have the detailed description so the detailed description will be generally specifying the entire processing the internal details of an entity will be specified here and this detailed discussion detailed description will specify the processing and data which will be generally specified using a flow chart or a program sorry a flow chart or process design language or program design language right so this is how we will be using so any software system design can be represented as a decomposition diagram then the structure chart to specify how modules are dependent with each other or a flow di data flow diagram or a transaction diagram or you can use interface files and parameter files to specify the interfaces and you can have the processing being defined as program design language or flow charts right so that's it about the ieee standard for software i typically recommended practice for software design description so please go through we will be discussing the i typically recommended practice in detail in the next video thank you